Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our Facebook Live session. My name is Demelza Campbell and I work in the FBI's Human Resources Division. Today we have something a little different for you in that we're discussing diversity at the FBI and recognizing Black History Month. We actually hope that this will be the first in a series of recognition in terms of diversity. We invite you to listen in as we tackle some tough questions and give personal insight into what led these employees to consider, join, and excel at the FBI. To be part of this discussion, ask us your questions in the comment box using F hashtag FBI Live. To find out more about our operational and professional positions, visit FBIJobs.gov. And don't forget to tag a friend below so that they can see us later. Joining me today are Senior Supervisory Intelligent Analyst Kwame Lewis. Hey, everybody. Supervisory Special Agent Eddie Winkley. How are you? And Supervisory Human Resources Specialist Erica Pugh. Hello. And guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We truly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules. Can you uh, provide the audience with a brief introduction into your background uh, and let us know a little bit about you? And I will start with Erica. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm Erica Pugh. Um, I am a mom and a wife, and um, I have a teaching background, a background in teaching, and I've been with the Bureau for almost seven years. Hey, Facebook, Kwame. I'm out of the New York field office, former Army. Uh, I got a criminal justice degree. I've right, been in the Bureau about six years. All right, Eddie Winkley. I'm a native of Kansas City, Missouri. I went to an HBCU in Missouri, Lincoln University. I have a master's from Webster University. I've been with the FBI for 21 years. Thank you. And let's dive right in, all right? What does it mean to you uh, as an African-American, and I, I believe we spoke a little earlier about the fact that you were actually Trinidadian too, so West Indian yeah. background. Uh, when you say, I work for the FBI, and I'm going to start with Eddie. Oh, I have to tell you, it's a badge of honor uh, to work for the FBI. I truly believe in the mission to uphold the Constitution and to protect the United States citizens. So each and every day that uh, I come through those doors, uh, it's like a truly a badge of honor for me. Yeah, and on that note, um, you are part of the FBI brand. And having that, it carries such a responsibility and, and such pride. You know, it's, it's just a very, it's a great thing. I have to agree with everyone here because I would tell you, the first day you walk into the office and the SAC stands up and you take that oath, you raise your right hand saying you promise to protect and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic you realize the sense of responsibility that just been instilled on you. Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, I've taken from the first day that I started this job, and I continue through it. And I also ensure that everyone who I work with understands the responsibilities we have to our community. You know, Kwame, you mentioned, you know, what it's like to, you know, walk through the door and take that uh, oath. What does it feel like when you all, when you walk through the door and you see that mission, I, you know, right in front of you in terms of to uphold the Constitution and protect the United States. What exactly does that mean to you? And, you know, Kwame, let's keep going with you. Uh, there are days that I find it's stress. It's a little stressful because, you know, you have a responsibility to your community. There are taxpayers, there are, um, the public, the citizens of the United States, that they're expecting you to come and do your job and protect them. And I know there are times that I, I do feel that, you know, whether it's on working counterterrorism, or if you're working from the criminal aspect, that you know you, you can't leave until that job gets done because you want to make sure that the public is safe. And I'm sure that Eddie would agree with that. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. I, I, I really love the fact that we have truly highly educated and dedicated people here at the FBI that assist uh, on each and every investigation. No one feels that something is too small or, or too big for them. So everybody comes together as a group and we work very hard to protect the United States citizen. I agree. Right. And, you know, as being part of that FBI brand, you are called to a higher standard, mm. you know, so. Awesome. So for those of you just joining us, thanks for tuning in. I'm Demelza from the FBI's Human Resources Division. And today we're talking diversity at the FBI and specifically Black History Month by tackling some questions related to the Bureau. 
Use the hashtag FBI Live to send us questions and remember to go to FBIjobs.gov for information on our operational and professional positions. Be sure to tag a friend in the comments below so that they can actually watch us a little bit later. You know, how did the FBI's mission fit within your community, you know, your community, your culture, and more your perceptions of the FBI before you actually decided to join? And Eddie, I'll start with you. Oh, wow. You know, I grew up in the inner city of Kansas City, Missouri. So we didn't have a good perception of the FBI. It was always kind of that us against them. Uh, but I've been a victim of crime. So uh, I saw firsthand the important role that law enforcement plays in our community. Uh, that's, what's made, that's what made me want to be a part of the FBI because I know that vital role and um, I wanted to serve the community. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking Elliot Nest, Jason Al Capone, <laughs> The Untouchables. I mean, that that was my perception of the FBI. You know, you have um, Clarice, you know, yeah, you start looking at the lambs. Lambs. Yeah, yeah. That was my, my vision of the FBI. But then I would say before 9-11, we didn't really see the FBI much in my community. Right. All right. We didn't really know the I couldn't pick out who the FBI agent was. But I would say after 9-11, the visibility was definitely there. They were definitely pushed to ensure that the, the law enforcement the community, they gave back to the community to make sure that we recovered after 9-11. And that was my vision of the FBI. And that's what prompted me to join the FBI today. And I, I didn't really um, I didn't really know too much about the FBI either. I mean, I just knew from what I saw on TV, you know, FBI, they always catch the bad guys. And uh, so I really did not know much about the Bureau. And um, it's funny, when I got my, um, my offer, not offer letter, but I got a phone call mm -hmm. about, you know, getting a job at the FBI. And they said HR specialist. So of course, you know, FBI carries a certain mystery with it. And so my mom's like, oh, you're going to be like a hostage recovery specialist. And I'm like, I don't know if that's what it means, <laughs> but you know, I'll find out. And, um, but then I get here and, um, you know, again, that standard that is set is so high. And, you know, it was a natural, natural transition for me because my dad held the same standards to the point where I'm like, did my dad write these policies here at the <laughs> FBI? But it was just a very natural transition to be here at the FBI. Right. You know, you mentioned dads. I know that uh, in my family, you know, my father and my uncles, you know, we have military that goes back to the Vietnam War and the Korean War. I know that um, I have an uncle, retired Texas Ranger. I have another uncle, retired chief of police, you know, service is a really big thing within my family. Uh, it's pretty huge. It's so huge, in fact, that, you know, at a family gathering, when, uh, you know, all the uncles and aunts were talking about what their kids are doing, you know, my kid works here and my kid works there. My dad walked in and said, you know, my kid works for the FBI. And it was a complete mic drop moment <laughs> where he said it and walked out. So, you know, those perceptions, it's just, it's been really amazing uh, to have growing up and to be able to bring here to the Bureau. You know, talking about, you know, the history of the Bureau, perceptions of the Bureau, the FBI has a very long history. We have over a hundred years of operations where we've done some really good things, uh, you know, brought justice to uh, Americans. And yet, We've also done some things that have had long-term repercussions, uh, especially on people from different ethnicities and cultures and just the ways that they, they see us. An example might be, uh, you know, the tapes, the Dr. Martin Luther King tapes from way back, um, or even past discrimination and promotions. What would you say to people who ask you about some of these negative moments in the FBI's history as it relates to the African-American community? What would you say to that, Kwame? I'm not naive. Um, we joined the FBI, I'm not naive. I will tell you, we live in a Google, we live in a Google generation. Anything that's happened in the past, we can find it out. Right? It only takes a few clicks, FBI, and whatever term you put in, it'll come up with some story right. that has to do with the past that involved the FBI. Um, what I will say to the people looking at the FBI, looking at our past, I would tell you, also look at the things that the FBI has done to progress to the future. Um, from our director down, they've continued to take, continue to take steps to address some of the things of the past, acknowledge the past, and also show how we're trying to take the Bureau itself to the next level amongst other organizations. 
Uh, we're not we're not any different from any Fortune 100, Fortune 500 mm -hmm. company who's seeking to diversify their professional staff. So while we do that, we need people like you to come in here and help us develop it from within as opposed to standing outside and not being able to provide that picture. Right. And just to piggyback off of that, I mean, we are more effective within, you know, we are yes. more effective when we are here and we are sitting at those tables and at those meetings where those big um, discussions and those big um, have a seat at the table, right? right? Yeah. Having a seat at the table, you know, where we, our voices and our opinions are not only being heard, but they're being counted. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, prior to me coming into the FBI, I had heard about uh, some negative things, but, you know, I come from the mindset, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Right. So I wanted to come inside and make a difference. And so since I have been into the organization throughout my whole career, I've tried to make a difference and tried to bring in more diversity, people of color into the organization uh, to, to make us greater, to make us the best that we could possibly be. For those of you just joining us, thanks for tuning in. I'm Demelza from the FBI's Human Resources Division. And today we're talking diversity at the FBI and specifically Black History Month by tackling some questions related to the Bureau. Use hashtag FBI Live to send us questions and remember to go to FBIjobs.gov for information on our professional and operational positions. Be sure to tag a friend in the comments below so that they can watch later. Uh, you know, <laughs> Despite some of the current tensions uh, between law enforcement and our community, we have a significant number of people of color that work at the FBI. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't think a lot of people really know that. Um, what is it that drives you specifically to be at the Bureau, um, Kwame? I would tell you it has to be sense of community. Community service since, you know, comes a little bit from, you know, the way I was up raised, my parents of Trinidadian descent, they've always said you have to give back. Then I joined the military. The military said you also have to give back, whether or not you give it back to the community, but you give it to your country. And now I come to the, the New York office and I'm saying you got a sense to give back to your community. You're born and raised here. This community took you to a level where you're at right now. You need to give back. Whether it's volunteer for um, Muslim Youth Day, which I do several times, you know, volunteer to the kids, talking to the schools. I definitely think the sense of community is what drives me many a times. Yeah, and we also at the bureau we have a uh, mentoring program, and uh, that's something that we are able to take part of. That's something that I kind of found out, you know, when I joined, and I'm like, oh yeah, because you know I, I'm a former teacher, so you yeah. know I get to be back in those classrooms with the kids, and and it's it's small things that kind of make a difference where we're you know we might color with them, we might read a book with them. Um, but just different things like that. And just to show like, you know, we are the FBI and we're here for you. And something else that, you know, being in a, in a human resources uh, position, we get to take care of these guys. Like we wanna make sure that, you know, they're taking care of us and they are taking care of America. We get to take care of them, make sure that their pay is correct, make sure that their transfers happen on time. And that's a responsibility that we carry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Demelza, I have to tell you, uh, by far it's the mission. Uh, that's what really drives me each and every day that I know that uh, people can play in the parks, they can walk the streets and feel safe. Yeah. That is what drives me, uh, uh, making sure this country is safe, uh, that we can disrupt terrorist sales, uh, we can help victims of, of criminal uh, criminal acts. Mm -hmm. those, those are the things that drive me. In terms of um, you know, our community, what, what is it that we can do better? You know, what is it that the FBI can do better? Um, I, I, I think diversity. I think diversity is something that we could always do better. We are striving to be a better organization, but um, there's so much more that we can do. Uh, I would love to get more diversity in so uh, we get different per perceptions in, different perspectives, uh, and that we can grow as an organization having people come in with different ideas. Right. And that is, diversity is a huge, um, is a huge topic in the FBI. And that's something that our director strives for, the director of HR um, and HR as a whole, we are all striving to bring in 
a more diverse um, you know, group of people. So mm -hmm. that's definitely something that we know is an issue, but we are definitely working on that. Kwame, did you want to add? I, I have to say, I mean, I, I concur with Eddie and Erica and what they're saying here, but I, I will say that it has to be communication. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the tensions, when you look on TV and see some of the, the, the issues going on between law enforcement and the local community, it has to do with the lack of communication. Whether it's communication, understanding what's coming from my perspective, communication on what my mission is, or communication on a perspective where we're integrated, we're working together as a community to keep our community safe. Yes. And, I, and I do think that is where you see a lot of the tension on TV. It's boiling over to an extent where individuals just feel like, you know, I have no way to express it. And then, you know, you still have the law enforcement at the same time. You may express it, but I have to also patrol it. So that's an issue at times. Well, you know, you mentioned communication. I just want to add to that, you know, it's communication within our, our community, but it's also communicating with our coworkers. You Absolutely. Know? Sure. Really making sure that we're talking to the people that we work with. They are, in many ways, our second family. We spend eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours sometimes with our coworkers. And so having some of these deep uh, you know, really well thought out, professional, of course, yeah. conversations really adds to the narrative and allows people to, you know, I think it really enables people to really see different perspectives. Right. Um, let's talk about diversity real quick. Diversity is, and I say diversity like this, diversity is often used to refer to gaining access. However, we don't often hear about it uh, being about somebody being welcomed, you know, or maybe belonging once they have that access. Has there ever been a moment uh, when you felt like you didn't belong at the Bureau? And Erica, let's start with you. Um, I'd say that I've, I've maybe felt that way maybe once, um, but in that I had to decide that I wasn't gonna give that person that power to make mm -hmm. me feel that way, because that's really what it is. You know, you're allowing someone to make you feel insecure about yourself and um, they don't deserve that power. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of took that away from them and you know, I have the power to say, you know, where I should be and where I belong. Right, and to add, you know, you did get hired I here, did. you right. know, which unless something egregious is taking place, right. the FBI is saying that you belong here. Correct. So that's a really good point. Um, Eddie? Uh, you know, I've been very fortunate, uh, Demelza. Um, coming from a special agent uh, point of view, you know, it's very important. It's, it, it's life and death. We have to depend on each other each and every day. So I've never really felt excluded. Um, you know, I've come on squads and I've been welcomed with a training agent. Uh, my peers have taken me in to show me different investigative techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also served on the SWAT team, and that's a very team concept. So uh, I've been very fortunate thus far that uh, I've always felt included. You know, um, that's a tough question, and I, I say it like this. I've never, ever felt that I didn't belong. Mm -hmm. But there were definitely times where I felt like I didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. um, there are many times you've gone to a staff meeting or you've gone to a, a a meeting of your peers and you look around the room and there's no one else that looks like me in that meeting. And sometimes that is tough. Um, as you continue to go up the ranks, it does thin out even further. And you look at executive meeting, you look around the room and you don't have that representation that looks like you and that is a struggle. It makes a difference. It definitely makes a difference, mm -hmm. all right? So whether you're looking for somebody to aspire to be, mm -hmm. all right, somebody you can take some time out so you can speak to them and just confide in them. You know, and I'm not saying that the current workforce we have, I don't feel that I can speak to these individuals, but you always want to be able to have somebody to lean on and speak to. And I would tell you the diversity sometimes is a struggle, but I would never ever say that I don't belong. Okay, thank you. You know, we'd like to take a few questions from the audience. Nancy asks, do you consider, uh, or do you feel that there is enough black representation at the FBI? I'm going to hold that out for my panel members. Well, that, that goes along exactly what I was saying a second mm -hmm. ago. All right? and I'm sure Eddie and Erica will build on that as well, is that you know, as you, you continue to go up, it starts to thin out. Right. So that representation, you might have the lower ranks of the workforce, you may see individuals right there. But as you go further up, you want to continue to have people to aspire to and individuals that will represent you at the top. Oh, thank you. And you know, for another thing is just, I wanted to maybe dig in a little bit. Eddie had talked about, you know, being welcomed into the squads and kind of the process for that. Uh, you know, Kwame, for you, you know what I mean? You work on the professional side in terms of intel analysts. You know, what, would it, what was it like for you in terms of how welcome did you feel? 
Well, New York's my first office. Albany was my, or New York is my second office. My first office was Albany. I would tell you, coming in, you automatically feel like a family in the FBI. Mm -hmm. That is something, whether it's from the beginning of your career or coming towards the tail end of your career, mm -hmm. I would tell you that the FBI treats you like family and you'll always be remembered, regardless if you're a professional staff or whether you're an agent. Mm -hmm. Which that actually runs us into another question from the audience. Otis asks, what is it like to have a family life while being an FBI agent? And so I'm going to throw that right to Eddie. <laughs> uh, it's about that work-life balance. Um, uh, the FBI is va very, very family-oriented. But, you know, there are some instances where you have some uh, cases that it requires a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And you have to get that understanding with, with your spouse ahead of time. But in most cases, going into the FBI, your spouse is, you know, you, you need to consult with them just to make sure you all are singing off the same sheet of music because there will be some times you have to work late night. Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Right. So we'll close out with one more question for our panel today. You know, what does the FBI do to honor or celebrate Black History Month? And you know, I was start, Erica, I think wants to jump in on this one. <laughs> well, I think that uh, the FBI not only celebrates, um, at, you know, Black History Month, but we really are celebrated all year round because the FBI mm -hmm. does a really good job in celebrating all cultures all year round with different events, with different speakers. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say all year round, I mean, they, they celebrate us. Right. It's not it's, just, it's not, not just, just February. Hey, here yeah. you guys right. go, right. here's right. February. Right. So, yeah. I would say the director gives us a lot of, all the divisions, a lot of autonomy, how do they want to celebrate it. But I would say from the speaker series that we do here at FBI headquarters, right all the way down to what we see in the divisions. I know in my division, we did get together. Uh, we had some speakers at our level. You know, we had food. Mm, food. Everybody ate together. You yes. know, we had some discussions. So it worked well. I think also the planning of it also brought a little bit of energy to the, um, the month itself. Yeah, and we, we have a diversity and inclusion section that monitors uh, all of our activities. Each field office, which we have 56, each one has a diversity and inclusion coordinator. So they make sure that we're celebrating uh, people of color within the Bureau. Right. And so, you know, with that said, I really want to say thank you <laughs> so much to our panel and to our viewers. You know, that does it for our broadcast today, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you check FBIjobs.gov for updates on our professional staff positions, uh, special agent positions, you know, and absolutely make sure that you come and check us out next time. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much.